Hey guys, today I'm going to go over a collection and I had this video posted on my channel and it's one of the saddest videos on my channel because I had the opportunity to buy this collection for relatively cheap, um, a couple thousand dollars, which sounds insane today, but this was in 2015, December 2015, where at the time, vintage was dying, legacy was dying, and old school wasn't that pop. I don't know if old school was new or, I mean, maybe it just was invented. But yeah, I had the opportunity to look at this collection. So this is, those are my hands. And I had it within my grasp. Every card was real. And I did, turned it down. I think it was $5,000 for all of it, which is insane because the Lotus itself right now for $5,000 is probably an okay deal. Actually, not an okay deal. It's a great deal. But each of these pages has thousands and thousands. I have no idea who bought this collection, but they made out like a bandit. I think the whole collection was around $5,000. I don't really remember, and I don't know what it sold for, but I remember the asking price was very low even at the time. And this was before any of these cards spiked in price. It's just beautiful cards, that Geyer's Cradle, Pendo Haven on the, uh, yeah, Power Nine's nice, right? But Pendo Haven's not bad. And like, this is the ideal collection for a 93, 94 player, because literally everything in this collection is 93, 94. Now you will see some Liliana of the Veils, you will see some um, other cards. I mean, look at these betas. Like, just the fact that they're beta rares is, uh, I mean, it makes the cards just so expensive. Howling Mind beta, like, Royal Assassin beta, wow. Shivering Dragon beta. Uh, there was some alphas mixed in, and he obviously he had Lilana Veil. So it wasn't like he didn't understand the price. He knew the price, but he really needed the money. So he took it to his local game store to try to have his local game store help sell it. This type of collection is really a once in a lifetime collection. Even when I played, I didn't have these cards. I So that Cloak of Invisibility, Edwin pulled one, it was like 150 bucks. And it's just like a random Legends Rare that wasn't valuable, was not valuable at all. Uh, lots of unlimited, plenty. I mean, so this is, these are the rare books, right? These are the cards he considers expensive. Uh, but in hindsight, you must imagine that there's plenty of Sir Angels, plenty of other cards that for lack of a better term today would be 50 to 100 dollars and that is insane that i had this collection in my hands and it was a really good price i had the money i said no <laughs> my gosh it was terrible i don't know why i did it i should have bought it and i i left I left thinking, good, yeah, I did a good job. I saved myself that 5000 whatever money it was. I remember saying that to myself and being really proud that I had turned down the offer. Whoever bought this collection, this is a $100,000 collection. Um, obviously, you have dual lands. Um, yeah, it's an unlimited, I think. And this is like the collection in a binder, right? So a old school player like this, uh, there's a time vault over there. An old school player like this is going to have decks. They're going to have just pockets of these beta cards, just pockets and pockets of them. Maybe some land war elves in beta, which are like what fifty to hundred bucks a land war elf. Maybe some lightning bolts from beta. This is just what you put in your binder because you don't know better. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I have never seen a collection like this before or since that has come to the market. 
the collections that I get emailed is like literally one guy who's trying to sell one beta card, like Orcus Arch Archery, and it was like, okay, no, because I already own a bunch of those, and I don't need that one. So, yeah, I had them in my hands, and I turned down the offer, which was very, so regretful. I, this was the biggest non-buy, in my opinion. Look at the binder it's in. Like, look at the binder it is in. It should be, like, encased, right? Like, what the? And even, like, this stuff um, does have value. But I wanted to show you, like, his whole, like, my concept was I was going to show you his whole collection, that this was a person who was quitting Magic. He was going, he pl did play Magic. He has uncommons here. This is the epitome of a casual player, right? In, this, in a better binder, he has uncommons from Innistrad than his one binder, which he literally like has Shivian Dragon beta, a couple hundred dollars, 500, 600 dollars, something like that. Um, like Innistrad, I mean, look, the cards themselves are not very... Oh, this is like a once in a lifetime collection and I was watching this video and I didn't remember about it until like I was trying, I was in the market for Power 9. I, I made fun of Power 9, but I kind of want it now because I realized that if I don't make a move on it, I'm not going to be able to buy it. Like, um, if I don't buy today, I'm going to regret not passing up the opportunity. And really, it is kind of an opportunity. It's something that you have to... Like if you want it, if you want any of these cards, these are very, uh, a beta Shivering Dragon, I've always wanted one of them since I was a little kid. And I had many opportunities to go out and buy one for like a much cheaper than they are currently worth. But I just kept waiting. I don't know what I was waiting for. And for this collection, I really don't know what, there's Princess Falia. I said I just bought the collection based on Falia, right? Oh my gosh. So my mentality when I was flipping through this was it's a good deal. Like I knew it was a good deal. The store owner knew it was a good deal. The guy selling it knew that he gave a very low price and everyone knew that this collection was a good deal. But to come up with that, and I had the money, so I had the money. It just, uh, I don't know. At the time, Magic was not doing well and Vintage was not doing well. 93, 94, I don't know if that was a format at that time. I was shipping out, at my Patreon, I was shipping out unlimited savannas to, and unlimited swords to plowshares. And you can watch my videos back, in, and I think I have those videos to Patreons. The stuff I was shipping was crazy. I can tell you a story where I shipped it, um, and unlimited savanna, plus like other stuff. And then... There was a card, just a random card in it, and they were worth eighty dollars at the time, and because they were from Unlimited, I was shipping Unlimited stuff, uh, which right now I don't even want to go back to those videos to look at what I was shipping to Patreon. But at the time, they weren't that valuable, so that's what you have to understand. Like, it, my gosh, like if I had known this ninety three ninety four thing was for real, I would have not been shipping unlimited savannas to patreons because you know unlimited is far more value I, I knew all the math i knew i know the numbers right but uh, even this like um look at that that's a time warp or a time clock or something look at the beta basalt monolith 150 200 dollars and it's just sitting there. Like, it's just not even organized right. It's just kind of randomly there. Copper tablet. It's not money. Icely manipulator. Like, oh, it's that book. So that book in Unlimited used to be like 80 bucks. I think it's like 50s now. And I was shipping them like, oh, wait a second. So 93, 94 was a format back then. And that's how these cards like that book spiked up in price. But I didn't realize that it would actually take off. Dark Rituals, I mean, just to get four Hypnotic Specters and four Dark Rituals, I would 
kill for this collection now. You just look at it. Wow, look at that, right? <laughs> that card's popper. It was just a really bad mistake um, not buying this collection because you can see how random it is, but it's not even this. There's more to it. Regrowth, beautiful card. There's way more than just this. This is what the, a casual player thinks is I should put in a binder. So imagine what else he has. Does he have a million force of wells? Does he have a million random lightning bolts in beta? Does he have a million counter spells in beta? Who knows? Who knows? Like word of changing. That's a great card. Fireball beta. Uh, disenchant. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I mean, it's all there. Blaze of Glory beta, which is a rare. And Norman Paladin. Like, I should have... I didn't even make an offer on this. It's in one of those old Ultra Pro collector's binders that everyone used to have as a kid. Strip Mine. Okay, look at that Strip Mine. That Strip Mine's like $150, $200. But back then, it was like 5 bucks, And he has six of them. Right, right, like that's uh, pretty uh, crazy. And he's, he, he's just so random. He's emical in the middle. You know, you see that those. I'm, I'm flipping through the page, pages so fast, but each of these cards is like insanely valuable today. Even Felwar Stone, I think, is like twenty bucks from the Dark Original Black Border. That bird on the left is worth money. It always was worth money. Uh, and now he has a dark steel class. It's like, what's going on here? Mirror Universe. Holy blank. That's a good card. Ivory Tower. Sword of Ages. That's a price. Pyramids. My gosh. Like, oh, Yagamar's Will, which is on the reserve. Like, literally, everything that you're seeing right here could have been purchased for pennies on the dollar. Greed is worth money now. Underworld Dreams is worth a lot of money. And then he has Diabolic Edic, which is like 50 cents, right? Like, this is like insane um, power, mute power artifact. And he has um, an Ice Age counter spell. <laughs> He's an Ice Age counter spell with uh, literally cards that are worth several hundred dollars, right? Why not? Uh, Stroke of Genius, I believe, is on the reserve list. Um, that card is kind of disturbing. It is Fact or Fiction, which used to be valuable, but it's not valuable anymore. Gyre's Avenger is a ton of money. And then he's got the Elder Dragon. Oh, Sylvan Library. How many Sylvan Libraries does this guy have? You can kind of tell by the amount of rares he has. He probably has two dozen Sylvan Libraries. Ali from Cairo. Shatterstorm. Oh, Jihad is just sitting there. And I mean, those two Jihad are just sitting there. That Angel card that these are just, um, I remember I was shipping Kismet. I was shipping a bunch of Kismets uh, from the original set Legends. And Look, he has what? What's that? A mirage? Like disenchant? Like next? Like the organization of this bind of these binders are killing me because they make no sense. Uh, here is, I believe, unlimited or revised. Um, those mana vaults are worth money. Uh, those assassins are worth money. It's such such a beautiful collection. Um, oh, unlimited so ring. Demonic Horde, also on a reserve list. Demonic Tutor, always good. Sinko, always good. Dark Ritual from Unlimited. My gosh, it is... Uh, it's a beautiful collection. From the top to the bottom, this is... I grew up playing during uh, Unlimited and Revised. I actually grew up during Unlimited, but we never had Unlimited packs. We only had Revised. Um, that's that's when Magic kind of get, grew more popular in my area. But I never had this collection. And I always wanted 
uh, Beta or Alpha Shivering Dragon. That's one of the cards I've always wanted because I had the Dragon Whelp, but you want the really big dragon. For whatever reason, I never pulled the trigger to buy it, and now it's like insanely expensive. And I have made a realization that, like, looking, there's Wheel of Fortune. How many Wheel of Fortunes do you want? You want a playset? My my best guess is he put a playset of all the rares in it, and then there was more. Look at that. Look at those uh, pyroblasts, red elemental blasts. Beautiful, unlimited. Unlimited Shivering Dragon is worth a ton of money now. Blaze of Glory. I know this is unlimited because Blaze of Glory is only unlimited. It's not in revised. One of my favorite cards growing up. This dude probably has hundreds of these very valuable uncommons today that we would be grateful just to even get one of them. And you can tell. You can tell by that this is a collection that he bought booster packs. Then he put the cards he thought were valuable in the Ultra Pro sleeve. And you can tell there's extra sleeves. Like, it's pretty crazy. <sighs> um, anyway, at today's prices, if a collection like this came, I would be willing to pay for it. And I would be willing to pay a very good price for it because I, I have a, I don't, I have the money and this is something I've always wanted. I have no idea why I turned down this collection. Anyway, bye guys.